going to continue our discussion on photosynthesis today. In the previous lesson, we learned about the light-dependent reactions. And one of the things that we said happened during the light-dependent reactions was that water was split into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen, remember, was going to go on to the next step, which we're going to use today, and the oxygen was released to the atmosphere. We also know that we needed carbon dioxide for our reaction of photosynthesis, so it just so happens it comes into play today. So an overview of the light independent reactions, which means now we do not need light, the hydrogen atoms from the light dependent reactions combine with carbon dioxide from the environment or the atmosphere to make a three carbon compound, which we're gonna call G3P or PGAL, phosphoglyceraldehyde. Easiest to know it's a three carbon compound. During step two, two three carbon compounds are gonna combine to make a six carbon compound. And the most common six carbon compound we know that our body uses is glucose, C6H12O6. Now let's take a look at the reaction in a little bit more detail. So this is a cycle. So as we come into the reaction, we're gonna have something called 3-ribulose biphosphate. RUBP. It's going to combine with a carbon dioxide from the environment, just so happens to be three of them, with an enzyme called Rubisco. As those two compounds combine in the presence of Rubisco, they're going to make something called 3-phosphoglycerate. They're going to make six of them. This is happening in the stroma. Once we make the 3-phosphoglycerate, we're going to have to use six of the ATP from our light dependent reactions, which remember we said the whole idea wasn't to make ATP because we're gonna need them. Here's where we use them. We're also gonna take those NADPH molecules from the light dependent reactions. We're gonna take those hydrogens off. That's going to help us to make our G3P sugar. Now, if you remember correctly, we have to do this process twice because we're splitting glucose into two three carbon compounds. So it just so happens that we're going to have to do this process twice to make our glucose molecule. So we have two G3P molecules combining to make C6H12O6. It has to happen twice in order to make every molecule of glucose. Now we can recycle some products from this reaction and we can take our ATP and turn it into ATP, ADP again in order to recycle our 3-ribulose-based phosphate in order to have the cycle happen over and over and over again.